actually happened. And we blew through our quotas within uh, a day or two. And it just... While that's uh, lagging a little bit here, what I'm watching right now is a live stream from Mobile World Congress where Niantic CEO John Hankey is talking, uh, giving a keynote about Pokemon Go. More than likely, they're not going to reveal anything upcoming new about the game because this is an industry event. But we're going to keep it on, we're going to keep watching and see. Just in case he drops some hints, accidentally reveals something, we'll find out. And finally with Pokemon Go, we're only getting started with the game. We just launched our first major update of 2017. We introduced 80 new Pokemon into the game. There are hundreds of Pokemon that exist within the Pokemon universe. Uh, we launched new apparel for trainers. Uh, we have three major new releases uh, for Pokemon Go mapped out for this year. So Pokemon Go, we expect to continue to be a healthy and growing product over many years. John, John Hank, wonderful presentation. I'm sure the addicts among you know very well that there are plenty of Pokemon to go out and capture. All right, that was it. That was what we wanted to hear. That's the only thing that we're going to hear. Three major updates planned for Pokemon Go this year. In my mind, the first three that come to mind are trading, PvP, and Gen 3, probably during summer. So anyway, that's it. Thanks, John, for sharing. Thanks for giving us that tiny little hint at what's coming. And uh, I gotta finish editing this. In an interesting unfolding of events, I'm here, sitting in the same place as I was 24 hours ago, wearing the same clothes, and you honestly wouldn't know it was the next day if I didn't tell you just now. In an interview with Spanish website El Periódico following yesterday's keynote, John Hankey is quoted as saying, Hemos programado el lanzamiento de actualizaciones cada trimestre este año. That translates as we've planned the release of updates for every trimester of this year. Trimester sounds like there might only be three releases total throughout the year, but many native Spanish speakers have pointed out that in Spanish, trimester refers to a group of three months rather than three groups of months. So the first trimester of the year would be January, February, March, and we've already seen the major update for that trimester, Gen 2. Following that, we can expect to see the next update sometime between April and June, another update following between July and September, and then a final update sometime between October and December of this year. The interviewer goes on to ask, ¿Cómo serán? or what will the updates be? John Hankey replies, ¿Habrá nuevas funciones? Por ejemplo, there will be new features. For example, being able to play cooperatively, group competitions. There will also be new Pokémon. So Hankey teases that there will be cooperative play features coming to the game, which is something we already knew from a previous interview. He says in the interview that that's what's worked in Ingress, and that they're going to adapt that for Pokémon Go. So in Ingress, there are global events, global leaderboards, that tell you which faction controls the most territory, and then there are also events where the two factions compete against each other. So we can expect to see something like that between the teams in Pokemon Go. Hopefully at some point this year that will include global leaderboards, local leaderboards to let you know which team controls the most gyms in your area. And then following those leaderboard updates we may also see events that run for short periods of time and reward teams for completing challenges as a team within a time limit. Of course, he also says there will be new Pokemon, and again, it comes back to the debate, does that mean Gen 3 or Legendaries? I'm saying now it definitely means Gen 3 will be released this year. As for Legendaries, they're more dependent on Niantic being able to plan events. So my answer is, it could be both. We could see Gen 3 and the first Legendary events this year, if Niantic can get the ball rolling on that. In other update news, the Pokemon website Cerebi.net has posted some slides from Niantic's talk at Game Developers Conference. The slides show a sort of beta or development look for Pokemon Go that includes more time of day differences. So you have sunny daylight, sunset, uh, nighttime, but it also shows weather effects on the map. There's an overcast day shown in the image. There's also a slide titled What's Next that shows a sunset image in the current style of Pokemon Go. And the post claims that Niantic has plans to add these gradual time of day changes to the game as well as real-time weather effects. That's definitely exciting, and it's going to help a lot with the real-world immersion of the game, but I wouldn't consider adding time-of-day changes 
and weather effects one of the three major updates that we're expected to see this year. Of course, we already know that Pokemon spawns are changing based on time of day, so it's going to be really cool to see Pokemon spawns dependent on weather, which is something that we've kind of asked for and expected from the beginning. So with these definite updates out of the way, let's flash back to yesterday and talk about some of the other potential updates that we might see coming to Pokemon Go this year. Here we go. Hopefully this is my last day uploading on public Wi-Fi. George's again, just because it's fast and it's already afternoon. This upload is almost done already. Best internet in Long Beach. Eggs hatching, and uh, I read a post on the Sylph Road from Dromps, the Sylph CEO, oh my god, more Paris. Dromps says that his sources, who I trust very much, Dromps anyway, I don't know his sources, says that trading is not a priority for Niantic right now, meaning they're not really actively working on adding trading to the game. Meaning trading is not in active development, which is probably uh, not a surprise to many people, considering there are a lot of dangers and issues with trading. Um, it could easily be abused by people with multiple accounts like we've talked about in the past. So with that said, my guesses for the big three updates have to change. I still think Gen 2 is coming. Sorry, I still think Gen 3 is coming. If you don't think Gen 3 is coming, you're wrong. It's gonna come before the end of the year. But it's super loud right here, so we'll talk about this in a second. So with trading not being a priority right now, Gen 3 definitely coming this year, and PvP we know is on the roadmap. I don't know what the next big uh, content release could be. A lot of people think legendaries, but I don't really consider legendaries to be a major content release. They're big, but they don't necessarily add a lot of new content to the game. Legendaries are way more dependent on Niantic being able to plan events than they are adding new features to the game. And we know right now that Niantic is looking for an event coordinator. There is a job posting online for an event coordinator at Niantic and I'm not joking, one of the things listed is that you need to be good with ambiguity. As in, you'll fit right in at Niantic. Shinies are another thing that was suggested a lot on Twitter this morning. But Shinies, again, are not really a major content release. It's not really going to affect gameplay at all. You're going to find a shiny Pokemon once a month if you're lucky. So it's really not going to be a huge, huge change. Now, during the keynote, John Hankey referred to Gen 2 as the first major new content release in Pokemon Go, which should hint at the size of what these three additional major content releases will be. Gen 2 and all the changes that came with it were huge for the game, but things like the buddy system, adding appraisals, all that small stuff, they don't consider major content releases. So that should give you an idea of the scale of what we're expecting over the next year. As for Gen 3, to the people saying it's not coming this year, what what are you thinking, honestly? It took seven months from the game's launch for Gen 2 to come out, and we saw how much the player base dropped in that time. There are 10 months left in this year, and if you think Niantic's gonna wait longer than seven months again, I feel, unfortunately, that you're mistaken. Summer would be the ideal time, in my opinion, to release Gen 3. There were tons of people who said Gen 2 wasn't going to come out until summer because people wouldn't play until it gets warm. Well, why not release Gen 3? Five months from now, it'll be July. It'll be the one year anniversary of Pokemon Go, and it seems like a perfect time to release Gen 3. From the beginning, I thought we would be getting new generations on a six month cycle. So if we go seven months to Gen 2, they learn from that and just uh, drop Gen 3 five months from then, great. Even if it takes a little bit longer, a fall release. Gen 3 is definitely coming before the end of the year. But let's not start getting too hyped about that yet, because that's a long way off. As far as PvP goes, I've said for a while that the whole gym battle system needs to be updated and changed before PvP could even work. 
So besides Gen 3, I'd say the best odds if you were to bet on what one of these three major content releases is going to be, it's definitely a gym rebalance, update, complete overhaul of the gym battle system, and introduction of PvP player versus player battles. So you can battle against your friends, your enemies, you can solve all your problems with Pokemon battles like they did in the Pokemon world. Uh, personally, I'm really looking forward to it because it means we'll finally have an opportunity for real life, real world Pokemon battle tournaments. People could start their own gyms. It's gonna be awesome. Hopefully that's one of the earlier updates and not like December on that one. Seriously, we know Niantic is trying to focus on features that are gonna promote social interaction in the game and think about what PvP could do for that. You could, like I said, start your own gym. Just hang out, let people challenge you. Stand on a bridge and don't let anyone cross until they beat you in a Pokemon battle. I mean, don't do that, but it's definitely gonna happen. As for our third major update, with trading off the table, it's hard for me to guess what it could be. Obviously, I think a move re-rolling or move training system is definitely coming to the game, but I think that something like that might be bundled along with a gym and battle system update. We're expecting things like status effects and stat buffs and debuffs to come to battles, and that might all come together along with a new move system for teaching your Pokemon new moves. Is this even the right size? With trading off the table, it's hard to say what the other big content release might be. Breeding is definitely a good suggestion. It's a good idea. But honestly, I think it's going to take more than breeding alone to consider it a major content release. If you think about it, breeding alone isn't really going to add a whole lot to the game. I should wipe these down. Yeah. Breeding by itself just gives you a way, really, to get candies faster for specific Pokemon. If you have one Snorlax, and say a Ditto or something that Snorlax can breed with, then you can breed and get a Snorlax egg, hatch the Snorlax egg for a chance at a Snorlax with better IVs and more Snorlax candies. That alone really isn't that much bigger than the buddy system. It's just a way to get candies faster. Now, with breeding, in the main series games also comes the opportunity to breed egg moves. Specific moves that Pokemon don't normally learn through regular leveling up, but that they can learn if one of the parents, the male parent, knows that move. Egg moves, then, would sort of be the same as adding a new system to teach Pokemon new moves. It would kind of go hand in hand with that, and it might be a little bit different in that you could teach Pokemon moves that they might not learn through other methods. But again, goes hand in hand with a move rebalance, a move rework, a battle system rebalance. By the way, you guys like this desk? I made it myself. I didn't make it. I just put it all together. This is from Ikea, but this is garbage that I picked up. This, I got on Craigslist for 10 bucks. Oh yeah, that's nice. Like a regular Casey Neistat now. As far as other features that breeding could introduce, Pokemon, when breeding, can pass down natures and abilities to their offspring. Natures and abilities are two things that could be added to the game. Natures, for those who haven't played the main series games, or maybe haven't played since uh, before Gen 3 came out, natures are an attribute that a Pokemon can have that's supposed to tell you a little bit about its personality, but functionally, it affects how a Pokemon's stats increase as they level up. Each nature will increase a particular stat's growth by 10% and decrease another stat's growth by 10% which is a big deal for competitive battling because you can use it to increase important stats like, say, special attack on a Pokemon like Alakazam and choose a nature, in this case Modest, that would decrease its physical attack, a stat that you're not actually using in battle. Again, I see natures as sort of a part of a big battle rework. 
But it does bring up another possibility, which is finally getting a physical special split in Pokemon Go. A complete rework of how stats are calculated and how stats work in Pokemon Go. In the main series games, there are two attack stats and two defense stats, physical and special, and it allows for some specialization in Pokemon. So Pokemon like Alakazam have very high special attack, but very low physical attack, while Pokemon like Machamp have really high physical attack and low special attack. And it just adds another layer of depth to the game, because some moves rely on physical attack, some moves rely on special attack. And obviously, they would deal damage based on the defending Pokémon's corresponding stat, either physical or special defense. I don't have a hammer. This should work, right? Okay. So, a physical special split. A stat rework. Obviously, would add a ton of depth to Pokémon Go. But again, sort of just falls under a general rework of the battle system. Uh. Abilities were also introduced in Gen 3. And each Pokemon has an ability that sort of adds a special effect to the Pokemon. Some of them have effects in battle, some of them have effects outside of battle. Some of them do both. For example, uh, Static. Static is an ability that Electric-type Pokémon like Pikachu have. Not all Electric-types, some Electric-types. Static has effects both in and outside of battle. So in battle, Static... In battle, Static has a 10% chance of paralyzing the opponent when they make contact using a physical move. Again, this relies on the physical special split because obviously it wouldn't make sense for a Pokemon to get paralyzed by static if they don't even touch the Pokemon that has static. Outside of battle, static also increases your chance of encountering electric type Pokemon. Sort of makes sense, the uh, static electricity that Pikachu gives off would attract other electric types. There are Tons of other abilities. Abilities that prevent your stats from being lowered in battle. Or that automatically boost or lower your stats, or your opponent's stats. Done. Abilities that prevent your Pokémon from being paralyzed or put to sleep, or even change its type when hit with a certain move. So abilities could definitely add a lot of depth to Pokemon Go, but again, I feel like that sort of comes with the whole rework of the battle system, which the more I talk about it, the more we talk about mechanics in Pokemon main series games that could be added to Pokemon Go, the more it seems like reworking battle mechanics, the whole battle system is definitely, definitely one of these major content releases for 2017. Even though all these things we've talked about sort of go hand in hand, Obviously, it's possible that they get released and, uh, you know, sort of staggered, that some features come before others. Obviously, I think a battle rework is top priority. Things like natures and abilities, they could work with the current system, but obviously they would work a lot better with a new system, a reworked system, with a little bit more depth than what we have now. Now, just to take a step back, going back to stat changes. It would be amazing. My number one dream for Pokemon Go is to get rid of CP. CP is the worst thing to ever happen in a Pokemon game, period. It makes no sense. It tells you nothing about a Pokemon's actual stats, about its actual power. Is it good offensively, defensively? You have no idea. Plus, using CP to determine gym placement just leads to the same boring Pokemon in gyms all the time. So my dream, my hope, is that we get to see a Pokemon's individual stats. If I'm being totally honest, I think Cassie wanted this PS4 more than I did. No, you, we equally liked it. Okay. Wanted it. We both wanted it. Set up internet connection. Oh no.
I don't have one yet. Can I play without it? Set up later. Perfect. There are other systems in Pokemon, things like Pokemon contests that could be added to Pokemon Go, but I don't think they're really priorities. It would be fun to have other things to do with your Pokemon besides just battle. Some sort of training system, anything other than candy, would be a really welcome change in my opinion. Though, to be honest, I don't think that that's very likely. But at this point, I feel like we've covered the most obvious, the most, uh, the most likely potential major content releases from the main series games that could be ported over to Pokemon Go and adapted for Pokemon Go. In the meantime, though, we're gonna play some zombies. These mini stroke waffles. Crazy. Oh, Go no. What? What is going on? Clowns? Oh my god, no wonder. I was like, who is following me now? Oh my god, maybe this is my worst nightmare. Oh god, I'm down. No, I'm down. Oh, oh no. no, no. No. Whew. Dude, I did not like the clowns. The great thing about living in downtown Long Beach is that we can just come down to the pike, to the harbor, at any time. And I decided we should go for a twilight Pokemon walk. So we're coming down here to uh, see if anything good spawning out here tonight. I'm going to have so many Dunsparce yeah. before this nest migration. So whatever the nest Pokemon is here, did that just run for me? Totodile though, let's go get that. Whatever the nest Pokemon is here in Long Beach, I'm always gonna have a ton of them. Oh, what? What happened? Did you see that? What? Pokemon fled, message comes up. Mantine's off the list, but it's still gonna be there for a minute and a half. So don't panic, just walk a little faster. You know, for a 10K hatch, it's really not a great Pokemon, but not too many of the Gen 2 10K hatches are, honestly. Larvitar. Larvitar. Uh, Mareep also is good. Ampharos maxes out about 2,700. It's similar max CP to Jolteon, but still, they made it rare, so it's exciting. Pineco. Nice. With Ooh, that, I have enough candies. Too. Really? Yeah. That wasn't 10k. What? Yes. So now I have enough candies to evolve a Pineco. Uh, hopefully this is a good one. I know I'm not recording my screen, but it's not above 80%. Looks like the Totodile that was here is gone. My phone's at like 2%. So that's going to be the end of the foam stuff. But in the meantime, Louisiana Charlie's. It's still Mardi Gras for another few hours. Might as well have some uh, Cajun food. Cassie put a lure on, spawned a Squirtle, my phone's dead. But to recap, three major content releases coming to Pokemon Go this year, at least on the roadmap. In my opinion, Gen 3 is definitely one of them. PvP, and with that, probably a huge rework of the entire battle system. Trading is off the table, according to Dromps from the Silk Road, and I trust him, so I believe that. He didn't say that they're not working on it at all, he just said it's not a priority. So it might be, it could be, a later release down the line, later in the year, or it might not come at all this year. There are a lot, a lot of things that can be added to Pokemon Go that are going to add a lot of depth to the game, specifically when it comes to battles natures, abilities, status effects, buffs and debuffs in battle, and of course there are other systems from the main series games that can be added to just add a little bit more to the game. So I'm just curious, as always, curious to hear what you guys think. Let me know in the comments what you think these three major updates might be. For now though, we are going to enjoy our Long Beach Mardi Gras with some Cajun food.